Shalom, shalom. My name is Liz Mickey, and I am a Torah teacher with the electlife.org ministries. I am here with another inconvenient truth for Ephraim. Ephraim technically is the most biblical word that you will find in the Old Testament for what we call today the bulk of Christianity. You are in the Old Testament. It's called Ephraim. And I have something to say. Now, the, the vill there's a very famous Torah sage within the house of Judah called the Vilna Gaon, where that means he was the genius. He's an actually brilliant mind, the genius of Mary called Gaon. And he lived around, uh, well, let me just say the bulk of his teaching, as I can determine, would have been around seven, uh, 1760 to 1780. But right around 1780, 1776 of the Senate, he, he, penned a book called the Kol Hatol. Kol. And it is a book of Jewish mysticism. It's a book that is that goes really deep into the plan of salvation that Yahweh has. And I want to I want to tell you what read what he wrote. And he says the Gaon says that as things begin to look worse and worse, it appears and it appears that our redemption is just a hopeless dream, you know, especially in our generation. It says the two opposing sides of the Messiah's disciples will come together with great power and force and unity and utterly destroy the negative force called Satan. Uh, the, 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 the influence, the God of this world that's been dogging us. Now, I do want to say something. First of all, think of this year, 1776. What happened in the world in 1776? We were preoccupied with this, the birth of this amazing nation called the United States of America, which is a prophecy come to pass in and of itself. And then you have this great genius again saying that the disciple, the two opposing sides of Messiah's disciples will come together with great power, force, and unity and utterly destroy the negative force called... Who, who are these two opposing sides? People. This is Christianity and this is the Jews. This is basically the, 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 the group of people on the planet that ascribe to this, this God of Israel. All right. Now there's many righteous people or say, but but by and large, this is where this group uh resides. So they're gonna come together. It says when the dark side least expects it. This sudden unity of love and brotherhood will remove death, darkness from our midst. It will be a surprise attack, a surprise unification between the two sides that will cause the full light of redemption to shine in our world, bringing peace to all humankind. I mean, what a thing to say. First of all, penning this in that same time period of the birth of our nation on the whole other side. Of the, of the ocean is this great Torah sage. These two streams, these two sides, it's called the two houses of Israel are going to come together. And it's going to be quick and it's going to be fast, fast and it's going to be game changer. People, if you understood today the level of unity that has already exists within the two houses of Israel, how Christianity today, we are in such support of Israel as a body. We're not, we're not on the Hamas side. We're not trying to utterly, just, we are trying to support. And that is new in history. Trust me, 200 years ago, that was not the reality in Europe for Jews. You know, the Inquisition, we're just talking 300 years, 400, 500 years ago, there was very bad blood between the Christians and the Jews. But not today. This is a new day. Um, so I'm saying we have to understand. Sometimes God's plans take a while, a couple of generations to work out, but they're working out in our generation. We are ready to be a united house of all Israel under the banner of what the God of Israel, what is his name? yod Hey, vav Hey. Now, I just want to go on and give you a couple more. See, now, like I said, I'm a Bible, I'm a Bible researcher. I'm a primary text researcher. It's very important to me. I've taught myself Hebrew and done a lot of things, but I, I I read, I believe in this, people. I mean, if you were, 
if you wanted to be at the top of your game in whatever biology or or history, you got to read broadly. You got to read what everybody else is saying. You got to be current. You got to be up to speed on the on the current you know thought processes going on. Plus the history and where you came from. Why should Bible theology be that different? I've spent my life the last twelve years reading primary text, the original text that that formed the basis of our quote unquote our theology. All right, one and this includes all the extra biblical books, people that we think we're not supposed to read, but are totally the curriculum. If you're following the Ruach HaKadosh for today. But let me read you this from Gad the Seer. This is a great book. This is mentioned. Gad is a prophet. He's mentioned in the Old Testament. And he had a book. Now, um, all right, I don't want to go into all the history of this. I have a lot of videos on these subjects. But let me read to you this. Chapter 2, verses 9 through 14. Gad the Seer. He says, be joyful and glad. Remnant of Judah and rejected of Israel. For those who understand the two houses of the Kohler, that's talking about Christians and Jews. Christians are really the house of Israel. Biblically. Jews are the house of Judah. Judah, Jew, <laughs> okay? So even that, the prophet totally understood these parallel train tracks that these two groups that ascribe to the same God are going on, all right? It says, you shall, as you shall be a curse and blasphemy to all the families of the earth, in order with, this is part of the, 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 the curse of in the exile or the dispersion. Uh, so shall you be a blessing and a grace forever. At that time, no cursed or unholy people will be found among you, for everyone will join you in the covenant. This is so important in the covenant, the law testimonies statutes ordinances and you and they shall have one lord one god one covenant one law one language and all speak in the language you know what that one language is it says here and all speak in the language of hebrew the holy language the lashan kodesh blessed are you O israel who is like unto you a people saved by the Lord, which is yod heh vav -Hey. For teaching purposes, I will say that is the name, all right? He will go before you to fight your wars and your enemies. But you have to understand, again, that this is not, a, 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 this is totally now, I will read you the exact same concept, okay, in, in a New Testament, in Isaiah 11, uh, chapter 11, verses 12 through 14. It says, he will raise a banner for the nations. He will gather the exiles of Israel. We have the exact same language. Israel in Judah. Uh, uh, um, the exiles. The, the remnant. The reject all these words. This is the history. of For salvation, um, he, will, he will collect the scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Then the jealousy of Ephraim will depart. Right, the adversaries of Judah will be cut off. Ephraim will no longer envy Judah, and nor, and nor will Judah harass Ephraim. This is like the, the, the this Christian and Jewish history that we've had with each other. That really has been sometimes harassment, sometimes jealousy, sometimes outright bloodshed and genocide. It's not a pretty picture, but it says here uh, in Isaiah ten twenty. On that day, the remnant of Israel, the survivors of the house of Judah, we have there, they will no longer depend on him who struck them, but they will truly rely on yod heh -Vav -Hey, the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. This is beautiful, people. This is prophesying. This has been known by deep Taurus ages. This coming together of the two houses of Israel. And starting and that we are one family, our father, starting from our father Abraham. As, as Jacob had these 12 kids, we are the fulfillment of the promised seed, the offspring. And trust me, people, there are many, it's, it's, yeah. you know, a lot of people want to think that's exclusionary. It's not. Many righteous people, maybe you won't identify with yourself as a quote unquote Christian, but you know what? I bet you in your lifestyle, in your morals, in your orientation, you are more Christian than a lot of Christians. See, we got to start judging by the outward appearance, but we got to understand the deep spiritual significance of what we've been called into and the type of fruit that it produces. 
But this is exciting. And this is what this ministry is all about. And I'm going to teach a new class called the Keys of the Kingdom starting January 16th, 930 Eastern Standard Time, live stream, free, come in, learn, be, be Berean, check out what I'm saying. And you'll find it's 100% document. Our tour does not lie. And the greatness, the, the, the depth of our tour that is going to answer everyone's question about God and their life and their purpose is, will be answered. And everyone, like Paul says, will be without excuse for believing the creator. These are exciting times. Let the darkness get dark, but let the light, ha <laughs> let's come into the light. It's a great day. So shalom, shalom. I'll see you in class. Or check out these new videos, but more than anything, Christian, even my check out inconvenient truth. I just want to say something. Don't have a dog in the race, so to speak. Truth is truth. Yahweh established it. There has been, we've lost a lot on the journey. So, you know, be humble. Don't have pride. Like, all right, let's not um let's not try to defend a theology that really didn't come from the mouth. Of Yod Hevav. It can all come into the light. So, Shalom Shalom. I'll see you in class.